Hey, welcome to Unlock Your Soul with Antonio Soul. I'm at the beautiful Fire and Door at Nairobi Street Kitchen. If you notice any smoke uh, in the show today, it's not because it's not because there's hot hot boys in the building. <laughs> It's because, yeah, there's pizza being made. So, yeah, I hope you'll, you'll stay so you can enjoy some pizza. Anyway, I'm with very, very, very funny well, startup comedian and also an entrepreneur, a business guy, but an all-round nice person. I am going to be talking today to Adan Abdi. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the pod. And too, I'm super pumped to be here. Yeah, I'm yeah. stoked. You're the only person who I've seen drinking cold water in the cold i mean it's so cold in Nairobi. why are you yeah, i was gonna water? ask for um room temperature water but i was like ah. and then what happened she had gone she had gone i was like ah, Jeez, never mind. my goodness i mean but are you like that are you call, are you always nice even when people like don't get you what you need yeah um I'm, I'm, i mean i try to be nice but um yeah i'm not a pushover i'm not a pushover okay you know what i mean it's one of those things um I, I try not to um, get in people's ways. Yeah. But but like I know what I want. Okay. I know what I want. So I mean, we so have something a- like this. This is inconsequential. I was like, yeah, ah. it's gone. I never thought I'd hear you use big words like that. Inconsequential. Yeah. We went to school. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you what is consequential today, uh-huh. and what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about you growing up Somali. You know, just you know, sort of those bloodlines between being Muslim, Somali, and also being a comedian, you know, and also your relationship with money and wealth. And yeah, we'll also be talking about wellness. It's, I think it's important for us to, it's true. to, 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 mm. to, to you know, to you know, to the line and just get into that conversation. But before that, I mean, tell us how you got into this stand-up comedian. See, and what does that mean? What's the difference between like, being a comedian and being a stand-up comedian? Um, well, um, stand-up comedians, you know, the, we have a lot of um, versions of comedy. We mm-hmm. have sketch comedy, mm-hmm. we have um, stand-up comedy. Stand-up mm-hmm. comedy is basically, you know, going, you know, um, performing to a live audience mm-hmm. on stage with a mic. Mm-hmm. Stand-up comedy, you're standing up, it's yeah. literally in the, yeah. in the world. Yeah, um, yeah so um, how I got into stand-up is, I remember... I came across the some of the videos on YouTube of um, the, the English stand-up comedy scene. Yeah, I was I was at home, and this is why I believe that the, 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 there's power that there's power in in speech. Mm-hmm. Yo, I used to look at, you know, um, some of the comedians I perform with right now in the scene, like Maina Murumba, super yeah. cut. Yeah, and I used to tell my siblings, yo, I I think I I, I can hack this man. Yeah. Yo, I, I, I used to tell, I used to speak it out loud. I was like, yeah. yo, this is, I feel like I can hack this if yeah. I put in the work. Yeah. I, I can, I can hang with these guys. Yeah. And um, so, <laughs> so fast forward to the first time I ever went to a stand-up comedy uh, event. Um, I was in a matatu, mm-hmm. the matatu. Mm-hmm. Um, um, from yeah, the 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 the, the that, that that go the Kenyatta route. Mm-hmm. So we were along Bagadi. I was yeah. <laughs> with a friend. I didn't tell him what we were going to do. Yeah, it's called Kevo. Mm-hmm. Such a nice card. Grew up together, childhood friend. Mm-hmm. So um um we in the Matatu. Kevo is like you. By the way, are we going? I'm like yeah. So there's this comedy thing, open mic. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna try it out. It's yeah. Like when did you start doing comedy, bro? Yeah. I'm like, yo, this is my first time. Let's go over there. Yeah. See what happens. Yeah. Yo, we get to two grapes. You, you've been to two grapes. Yeah, so, yeah, in Kilimani. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So right now it's big. We are performing for 150, 200 people on a yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. You want to? You the scene was um, relatively small at that time. Yeah. Um, we are performing inside the the, the bar area, the, the room, the small room inside. Mm-hmm. For how many people? Remember the first open mic I did, we performed for eight people. Gosh. <laughs> and about um, eight, ten people. And about um, two were comedians inside the, 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 the room. <laughs> the other comedians were outside. And probably everyone else was like auditioning. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I remember we we had, um, I was the only new open micer that registered for that. For mm-hmm. that day. So I remember uh, running, uh, leading up to that day, I used to, I um, I used to text Bran Onjoro, the host, yeah. and like, hey, yeah. man, um, can I go up? When yeah. I come, like, yeah, sure thing, come. So I get to that point, and Onjoro does, um, the, he was the host for yeah. that day, Bran, yeah. you know him. Yeah. He's a funny, funny dude. Um, yeah. 
Pastor Njoro does eight minutes on stage. Yeah. I used to think that that thing is easy. I saw the guy, you know, trying to warm up the audience. Exactly, the audience yeah. was cold. Yeah. I was like, this is going to be me. You guys are like only three people in the, in the audience. So, I mean, you can imagine it's more difficult to get them to, you know, to, to get where you're going. Yes. Yeah. So, I was like, so I... I pulled my friend outside and I was like hey man this is this, <laughs> this is a bad idea Bro, let's go back home <laughs> to Rudy Nyumbani let's go back like next time I have an idea like this punch me in the face man. yeah it's like no you okay so it was like um, why don't you do your material so he did my material to my friend and he was like I, yeah I think I, I think y- y- you have this man yeah just yeah. go in there yeah so Onjoro went up and said uh, the next comedian he yeah. gave me such a weird introduction yeah and say the next comedian I've forgotten his name but he's a new guy please show him all the love yeah you can make it loud for I've forgotten his name yeah. <laughs> you're like wow I'm so easy to forget yes so I went up I did my material mm-hmm. I, um got a few you know one of the you know those phantom laughs they're not yeah. really laughs laughs yeah. they're not barely laughs yeah but like yeah it's something and is that coming from Kevo who said like support you or you, you're Kevo is la- you're like <laughs> this is my boy right here just to pretend I didn't pay him to laugh at the- <laughs> Kevo, how much were you paid to support this guy? Shout out. Kevo was like, I'm just doing this for my friend. And he he probably thought this, my friend is funny. Yeah. 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 Um, so I uh, after the, the the open mic, Eric, the founder, the curator of stand-up uh, punchline comedy club Bayro, became up to me and was like, hey man, you really have a gift here. You just have to keep coming to these open mics and you're yeah. going to get better. Yeah. Um looking back, I'm not even sure how that went because I didn't have any reference base mm. it, like i didn't know what killing was like i didn't nah. know what bombing was like yeah. you know i mean i didn't yeah. know what to feel i was like yeah. is this how it's supposed to feel like mm. what, what just happened yeah so i went home um i had a lot of positives to take from 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 that yeah uh, my first open mic my debut so i just kept on you know going for the open mics getting better and yeah. better and yeah. better and as you're doing this does your family know i mean your how many siblings do you have um seven so does uh, your parents are alive yes do they know that our son is out here going to do stand up comedy now? because i mean i feel like i've only met two somali stand up comedians i know i will not that is in kenya i won't speak about like what happens in somalia or in like in the states or whatever so it's relatively quite new for anybody you yeah. know from your culture did they did they know then why you hide in how and these things happen at night yes so yes and probably there's no football match because i know some malis love their football uh-huh. so how, what excuse are you using to say i'm going to make people laugh like um yeah when i started stand up um I mean I guess I had the 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 room and the latitude to do my own thing because because I I moved out out of my parents house mm. born and raised in Nakuru county mm-hmm. um so I came to Nairobi for high school then then campus which high school were you in Moy Forces Academy MFA MFA, MFA. Mm. so you're like those hey, you're a choppy you're a, yeah, you're a smart kid I try you know. yeah because MFA is not for you have to be like really smart if you're in that school yes yeah um I I try to think I'm smart I try I uh, want to be funny. And <laughs> <laughs> I do want to laugh. <laughs> Damn it. Remember I told you I'm not going to laugh at any of your jokes. That was forced. That was forced. I don't want to laugh. I paid him. I, I paid don't want you answer. to think you're funny. <laughs> That's the thing when you have friends, you don't make them feel that nice. Yeah. But he's a funny guy. You have to go to his shows. So you are MFA. Yeah. I, I mean, yes. your parents are thinking we took you to this nice school so you yeah. can come and make people laugh. Yes. No, no. Um I started stand up in campus. Yeah. So so after um, after um, high school came to Nairobi again for campus. Yeah. I was I was a responsible um kid because I was living alone the whole time. Yeah. So so um I had the that, that you know benefit of doubt from from my parents was like okay so this this guy is pretty responsible mm-hmm. um he's doing his thing mm-hmm. he's in school. Um so yeah they, they they never they they didn't know I didn't tell them mm-hmm. the only person that knew was my older sister shout mm-hmm. out to mm-hmm. her she's um she's a big supporter of mine ever yeah. since I started stand up yeah. so I used to go at night I used to keep it to myself I never wanted even friends to know because I I knew I sucked at stand up wow because you never you never really start out as a master in yeah. any art form yeah true yes so I knew 
I was like, I have a gift, but um, stand up comedy above everything else is a skill, Anto. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I yeah. knew I, I'm, I'm probably going to suck for about six months. Yeah. And I don't want these people to be privy to the moments that I suck and yeah. died on stage. Yeah, yeah. I used to die on stage, Anto. For real. Bruv. Used to be that. There's times when you are bad, like you are just like, oh my God, I'm bad. Like I, I suck. I was funny. Yeah. But green. I was funny, Gosh. but green. Yeah. So now I'm technical. You know, yeah. as you know, you grow up, you, you know, you put in the work, you develop instincts, and then, and then, you know, your intuition as a comedian gets better, and mm -hmm. you, you, you become more technical with the craft. Yeah. But then, then I was funny, but I was greener. You know, right? Comedy is a very complex art form. Yeah, it's it seems simple, but yeah, quite complex. It's all, yeah, it's, a, it's all about the subtle elements. Yeah. You know, like how, how am I going to set up this joke? Yeah gonna add in some little misdirection so that the audience so that I don't telegraph my mm, punchlines. Mm. I don't know where this guy is going. Mm. You know? So I knew, I knew. I was um I knew it's gonna it was going to be bad before it became better. Mm. And yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty um I have a strong strong um, mentality Wheel, yeah, yeah, and yeah. willpower yeah. I knew I knew how do, do, you, do you view life like that I, you say something quite honestly quite deep uh -huh. that it's you know it's quite, what fast is bad and then it gets better yes. do you is that your outlook on life generally yes 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 everything gets better with time and too with time you know um, at that point um, and I, this is this is something I, I, I heard on a podcast um, beginners and, 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 and masters have different needs. Mm. So as a beginner, yeah. in any art form, in anything you do, don't yeah. try to be technical about it. Just, yeah. lo just love it. Yeah. I used to love being on stage. Mm. I was like, uh -uh, I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. Then as I grow older and as I, you know, have, you know, getting more months in the game, more yeah. years, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be technical. Yeah. As a beginner, what you need to do is 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 love what you're doing otherwise mm. if you be you know um, get caught up in trying to be technical you're gonna mm -hmm. dread it it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna be like what exactly yes. yeah so yeah i mean i i think that's my mentality even you know uh when it comes to life yeah you know? yeah even I, even in relationships man. yeah like, oh hey tell us about the hair relationships yeah man are you are you a beginner or a master at yeah. relationships I, I've, I've had, yeah I, I've, do you have a degree or a doctorate yeah um <laughs> which one yeah, I'm, I'm pretty i'm pretty experienced pretty okay experienced. how many how many girls have you dated uh, uh yeah i've had my fair share of um fun and and yeah i mean experiences but um yeah you know in a, in a nice halal way and <laughs> yeah what I was about to say in a nice halal way you know just you know you know i'm you know i'm pretty uh social you know i've put yeah. myself out there i've yeah. met interesting people yeah we just sort of shaped how i view people relationships yeah. and, and, yeah. and life you know yeah so going back to what we're talking about in everything <laughs> like how you moved away from relationships you're like oh my mom yeah. is gonna be like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy has been haramming out here <laughs> not really you know and too it, it's the same thing we're talking about uh -huh. you know what i mean it's like it's like it's like um you know, the space I'm in right now with the person I'm saying is, yeah. is, is a very healthy space. It's yeah. like, uh, I've put in work, I've put in work on too. You know, when I've put in work, I've put in, you know, a lot of effort and, and time and, yeah. and sweat. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing I'm enjoying now, this beautiful thing that, you know, we are currently enjoying now, yeah. wasn't always this. Yeah. It's a product of exactly. um, the, 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 the you, you know, both of you putting in work, yeah. going out of your way mm -hmm. for the other person and mm -hmm. trying. Yeah, it's like that yeah. even with life. So, yeah. so when you start something, just, you know, you, you've got to be willing to soldier through the... Yeah, I like the, that. And for anyone who's even like listening, who's like, who wants to be a comedian, who wants to be an actor, I, I mean, it's important for them to understand that yeah, it, it didn't take you three days to be who you are today. Yeah. And for you, probably the stakes are higher because from a cultural perspective, you, I mean, you have to be really careful in terms of like your content. You have to, you're representing like a huge group of people because uh -huh. then there's a lot of young people who want to be like you and they're Somali or, or they don't even have to be Somali, honestly. They're probably just young kids who are thinking, I want to be like this guy. And mm -hmm. it, 
for them to know that it didn't take you three days yes. or three hours yes. or like one huge joke yes. that you've been using all along. Mm-hmm. You're constantly mastering your craft. Yes. So I like that intentionality about you. Let's talk about you growing up Somali. And the reason why I felt it was important for me to host you is because, I mean, first and foremost, I have very many Somali friends. And I feel that's like saying I have, it's like, I feel it's like a white person saying I have yeah, black I'm, I'm friends. Black dude. Yeah, yeah, listen, I have a lot of black yeah, friends. Yeah, I have a lot of black friends. So I, so now I'm not racist. And do a fat joke. My yeah. friends are fat. <laughs> What do you? <laughs> wow, <laughs> guy. So, so it's it's the reason I I insist on saying that is because I feel because of my proximity and you know and being close to uh, Somali Somali people, I I there's a lot of mis misunderstanding, mm-hmm. including for example when we say Somali, because mm. we don't walk around saying your uh, my Luo friends, yeah. my Kikuyu friends. I mean and table talk we do but like in public people don't don't sound tribalist uh-huh. but you are kenyan first yes but you're constantly put in the box of being somali i mean i want to understand you growing up and some of the misconceptions and just you types that you received as a kenyan somali uh-huh. and constantly having to explain yourself that first i'm kenyan yes. i'm not somali yeah like i'm not saying i'm not somali yeah. but i'm not somali yes. i'm kenyan yeah. So I the idea you. of always being reminded of Somali, I mean, how that has been for you growing up, seeing it around you at home, whether it's experiences you've faced or your parents, your siblings. I mean, tell us how, how that experience has been for you. Aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. So um, I, I grew up in Nakuru County, born and raised in a small town outside Nakuru called Gilgil. Gilgil. Yes, my, mm. we have a family home over there. Mm. So I, uh, it's the county is predominantly Christian and non-Somali. Yeah. In a, yeah. So I, I grew up um, around. Oh, a you lot guys of, are a city now. Yes. Nakuru yeah, we got. Yeah, we are now. a city now. It's, it's without, a, yeah. without an airport. Big thing. <laughs> without an airport, we are working on that one. So yeah. So so growing up, um, I, I wasn't really aware of what was happening. Yeah. Because we, we were just kids. You know what yeah. I mean? We were. I was. I remember in in, in primary school we were like um, five, five, six Muslim kids mm. in the class in the whole mm. class, mm-hmm. and um, three Somalis. So it it wasn't a big deal. Um, I was like, yo, this is how life is supposed to be. To man. be, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yo, my friends were Kevo. Yeah. The Kevo from yeah. stand up. Yeah. Uh, Kevo used to be my boy. Exactly, I used yeah. to chill with it. it never used to be um a big a big deal. Yeah. I wasn't aware of how big of a deal it was until I came for, for high school in Nairobi. Yeah. yeah. And yo, that was the first time I was saying just a lot of Muslim population in, yeah. in school. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, this is big. Yeah. And 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 the culture shock, right? Cause 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 even with them. Um, even with uh, you know my classmates in yeah. high school, yeah. like yo, how, how bro? Why are you so different from the other Somalis? Yeah. Why did you, you you're social? You get along with everybody. Yeah, I'm like, isn't this how it's supposed, it's supposed to, to be? be? Yeah, yeah. Because because we used to have because um, Somalis are different, man. Yeah. Because I'm I'm a Kenyan Kenyan Somali. Yeah. I mean, I'm more Kenyan than some of yeah. by Kenyan. I friends. mean, I, I, to be honest, for me, I feel like until you explain yourself. Even the way you speak, you can't tell. Like you don't have the Somali accent. I don't. Do you even speak Somali at yeah, all? Yeah, yeah, I do. For real, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, so, so I came to high school and uh, I, I saw some of the Somalis from from like Somali counties like yeah. Mandera and yeah. Garissa and Wajir. Yeah. yeah. Um, they were a bit closed off, you know, like because again, I'm I'm not coming from a. Uh, um, not punching down on them or anything mm, because mm. that is that, that that was their life that was their you know um everything your personality and demeanor and temperament are yeah. a function of exposure yeah there they didn't have any non-muslim non-somali exactly, in yeah. their school yeah. like they, they grew up just around somali exactly, yeah. so coming to, to to high school that yeah. was a culture shock yeah for them yeah so and, and I, also for those they are now meeting yes because even for them they're like hiya, hiya. or the, you know, so it's, it's nothing wrong with them. It's just now everyone is like, "Hi, Akumbi, this is how everyone." Okay, we're not okay. We're all, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it was a culture shock. I mean, yeah. even, even during funkies, you yeah. know, you used to be outgoing because I've yeah. been around girls, man. Yeah, <laughs> you are there, Katiarin people, and mind. all the Somali boys from Mandera are. Hey, we yo, call it. They are breezing. Yeah, they, they are breezing. <laughs> <laughs> They're just chilling there, like, Yo, how do you do this? Yeah. Like, what do you mean, how do you do it? Yeah, what's happening? So you just go and talk. Like, how do you talk? <laughs> I remember. 
<laughs> I remember this one guy. Yeah. And I swear to God. Yeah. So in MFA, we used to have a mosque in school. Mm-hmm. This one time, we were the host of uh, MFA Opens. Okay. So uh, girls' schools used to come to our school and what everything. What was this sister school? Um, MFA Lanet. Oh, Lanet, okay. But they, mm-hmm. they never used to come because they were in Nakuru. Yeah, they're far, quite so far. So you have Baburu, yeah, Pangani Bungals, Girls, yeah. Parklands I, yeah. yo, yo. State yeah. House, State so House. Yeah, that's, that's my sister's school. Don't oh, own yeah? Don't own them, please. Don't lie oh, to yourself. You, you went to Patch? Hill. No. Upper. Patch, Patch their sister, sister school, school is, uh, was, I think, Kenya High. Kenya High, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, those are just like, I don't even think they were okay being brother and sister school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah man, you're like, we are not. So you are this funky. Mm-hmm. Yo. Funky, Yo. by the way, means function. Function, yeah, man. but it's yeah. Insider, you know, yeah, the insider, yes, insider magazine. Yeah, yeah. Insider yeah. came to our school, man. Yeah. So, 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 um, I remember, man. I, I used to be outgoing. I used to be outgoing. Um, I was smooth. I was a smooth talker, man. Even in high school. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I remember we we used to have our terrace outside our classroom. Yeah. Da, da, da. We, I was in form two, I think. Mm-hmm. So on Saturday. Yeah. I never used to play any sports. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I remember that, that that Saturday I had uh, had on the 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 the, 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 the scouts mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. top. Yeah. Like you, I'm, I'm the scout. Yeah. yeah. Show you around. Yeah. yeah. So we were. I remember. I remember um, vibing chicks from this school. Riara. Riara. This used to be a big deal. Yeah. Because that's like a private school. Yes. Yeah. Like you. Listen, me. Me. I'm going to. Vibe only chicks from Triara. Exactly. Like, oh yeah. Let's Across the rails. Me, I'm not doing this public schools. Bro, I got two. Yeah. Two. Right. I'm in the middle. <laughs> yeah. We are holding hands. So, hey, sh- <laughs> <laughs> look at the joy so, in your face. Yo, for some reason, yeah. Um, we had to pass next to the mosque. Uh huh. So this guy was in form four and I was in form two. He used to be like a mentor of sorts. It, it, it wasn't like a consented <laughs> mentor yeah it was I, like I, I didn't sign off on it <laughs> <laughs> this guy was like yeah, I'm your man it's not consensual I'm like you do realize this is not so yeah, this, 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 this it should come from both parties to be my father yes this is yeah. unilateral it's, it's you <laughs> this guy came he was he was short. he was older than me man I, I used to respect him yeah like well why are you forcing yeah. all issues <laughs> this guy came so we are passing next to the mosque this small um, corridor yeah this dude literally stood in the center. Wow. And uh, just clung on to me. And the, and, the, and the girls just let go and kept walking. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be with you in a second. Yeah. I didn't, man. Yeah, like, what have you just, why? You're spoiling my vibe, man. Like, bro, what, what's up? I was just showing them around. And and by the way, I was about to let all the boys in the school know Riara, bro. that me, I'm ah. holding two girls. I'm working with two girls. From Riara. So what happened? Why you not angry? You're like, oh, was, you're in form two, but yeah. you can't do anything. Yeah. I used to respect the guy who was yeah. uh, you know, uh, ranking. Um, That's like grade 10. So you're like, yes. I don't know what to do. I, you can't fight the guy because yes. he will fight you, bar. He will yes. beat you. Yes. And you'll be left with him in school yes. anyway. And I was a ranking member in the Islamic you know, leadership yeah, in school, yeah, yeah, yeah. Muslim society. Yeah. So I was like, ah, I remember his name is called Abdul Salam. Abdul Salam, what's that? Salam, whatever you are, you are a cock blocker. <laughs> That's all. We're just you are a culture menace. Man. Stop calling him cool. Culture. He's not cool. He used to come to school. Menace after to finished. society. <laughs> Did he come to school for eleven from four? Yeah. Exactly. You see, you are bored. <laughs> what are you going to do in school no, after you finish no, school? Used to bring shakes. Used to bring shakes. Have you met him? Have no, you met him? No. no Have no, you met him? No. Okay, so no. nothing will happen. Yeah, so. His name is what again? Abdul Salam. Abdul Salam. Cool chap. No, cool chap. <laughs> used to know my sister. Trying so to, Trying to be diplomatic here. Yeah, man. <laughs> So, so, so I was like, what have you? Done? I was just showing them around, and, um, no malice, you know. I'm not even trying to get crazy. Yeah, I know myself. Yeah, I was like, yeah, it, it's not just, yo. So he was so like, he told you wasn't. He told you like, no, you can't do that. It's like, it was like you, guys. It's like you, you're feisty, and you, you, you're crazy. You can go crazy if you're not. <laughs> I'm like, no. So, Jeez. so yeah. So you, I looked for those chiles everywhere. Man. Yeah. I was like, where, where are the two chiles? You couldn't write a letter. You couldn't find them again. Oh, I, I went to the pitch like 15 <laughs> times. Like, where are these chiles, man? <laughs> it's, 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 it's interesting because you, you bring up that before we get into like gatekeeping, because that's yeah. all something I want to talk to you about in the, yeah. in the, in the comedic uh, scene. I mean, apart from that experience in school where, you know, people don't really understand other Somalis and, uh-huh. you know, you feel like, 
there's no space for people to understand you. Have you faced that now outside of school when it comes to, let's say, dealing with either government or dealing with uh, just uh, people? I mean, Kenyans in general and how they stereotype uh, Somalis or even police. Yeah. And even just, you know, the way people think like every Somali walking around has like a million dollars they have in their bag. Oh, I mean, bro, I'm one of the broke do, ones, yo. Yeah, right. You are not broke. You sp- By the way, you smell like money. What cologne do you have on? Ah, uh, it's called Opul o- Opulus um, uh, Opulus Musk. That cologne. Hey, it's hey, dope, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. You know, I have this cologne meter. Aha. Uh-huh. So now, you are like at like number. F- yeah, you have at like number. F- no, but it's still a meter of like cologne. What? Like yeah. yeah so yeah. the people who have met, uh-huh. you're not like number five of like the best. Cologne so and, far. And you've met a ton of people. I've met a ton of people. So at number one, who called this? There's a part of mine from Eldritch. He's called Johnny. He's at he's at number one because him his cologne game. He's uh-huh. just a rich kid. Then there's Sakodie. Then there's Omi Dimples. Uh-huh. You're actually number four. Omi Dimples. Omi Dimples cologne. Dom. Yo. And that's the thing again. You're Somali, so Somalis always smell nice. So yes. again, another stereotype. So yeah, people will assume that you have money. So how's that experience been for you now in the real world dealing with being Somali? Um, it's, it's been, it's been, and as much, you know, it's easy to, to, to play a victim and say that, you know, it's, it's always tough, but yeah, it's that, that's, that's true. But also, yeah, we have a lot of Kenyans who are yeah. man, like very, very exposed, man. Yeah. They know this. Yeah. It's like they, they see me doing my thing and they, it's not even a shock to them. I'm yeah. like, hey man, way to go. Yeah. But you know, and also, um, I've had an instance where I did a joke about you I just go on stage yeah take the mic the, the, the host is calling me on stage yeah so you go I'm like uh, what's up what's going on guys please keep it going for the host I'm like ah this yeah is. yeah Somali Somali yeah yeah, yeah. Somali 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 <laughs> It's tricky. I did an AI joke. And I was, this Somali did an, uh, did an AI joke. Wow. Artificial intelligence, mind blowing. Gosh. I'm like, bro, we, 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 we've we gone to the scroll. But what, is, but what is it? What do you think this stems from? I mean, I know we don't have the age or the impetus to uh, be like, we've yeah. been here before, yeah. you guys. But where do you think this comes from? Because I, I don't understand why anyone who's Somali is first is automatically seen as a foreigner. I just don't get the concept. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, it, it, I don't know. I don't wanna. I don't wanna speak for all Somalis because I feel like I don't have the license. I'm, I'm, I don't wanna take up that mantle yeah. because it's it's a, it's a big responsibility, and this is just me. This is just me. Um, I yeah. I, I feel like you know um, Somalis. You know we've um, we've we are sort of underrepresented in in, in certain certain um, industries like, yeah. like like showbiz, for yeah. instance. Yeah, it's like. Imagine a DJ, man. Yeah. Imagine how, imagine how many DJs have had to 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 figure out to curate a playlist <laughs> for a Somali exactly, performer. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, yo, this is so. What should I play? You've exactly, had a DJ yeah. playing a Somali song. I'm yeah. like, well, what in the yeah. ethnic profiling is, is, this? is this? Yeah. Yeah. Just play me. And, and then they only play one song. Yes. And I love for, you more than my life. Nakupenda <laughs> mimi Which, by the way, is like a really old song that ended up hitting because of TikTok. Yeah. But they'll be like, that's the only song that like play. Uh, yeah, I'm like, bro, I, I listen to Afro beats. Yeah. Well, what's this? Yeah, now? like why? why you also, why did you me? ask me? Why did you? Yeah. And be like, what song do you want? I went and I'm like, uh, this, this is. But, 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 you know, it's easy to um, condemn, you know, um, you know, the non-Somalis, so to say, you know, yeah. for, for, for not, not knowing how to, to be around Somalis. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, because, because it's true. It's exposure. They've never yeah. been. You know, around Somalis, they don't know how to. You know, they don't know us. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. to say, because uh, also, yeah. So so, um, I'm not coming from a point of ah, you guys don't get us. But also, there should be a lot of knowledge. I feel that I feel I feel like I know you're trying to be nice. I feel like you're a very diplomatic person, but there should be a lot of intention, yeah. intentionality about yeah. how we treat people. Yeah. We treat people first as humans before we classify them and decide that everything we've had or we know this is who they are. And and for me, I f- I feel that a huge, I feel m- movies play a huge role in terms uh, of how yeah, they uh-huh, uh-huh. they they sort of represent Somalis. Because uh-huh. I feel like every movie where you see a Somali, they're represented as some guy working in some sweatshop planning to bomb some place, yeah. or like some snitch who's ratting out another terrorist. Uh-huh. So it's always connected to a terrorist and even when they show like let's say it's the 
uh, it's what the Pentagon uh. and they're showing about the movement we go to Somalia or yes. whatever they just show that places where they feel like some terrorists is hiding yes. they show Somalia yeah. Nairobi, Nairobi. Jobag, I mean just to yes, represent yes, yes. N- and you're always thrown in there. Yeah. So the conditioning has been happening yes, slowly. Yes, yes. And then now when you've seen Somalis like let's say building in Isili and all those things, again the conversation becomes where do they get their money? Yeah. But we don't ask that when our relatives bring V8s and yes. Prados at home. Uh-huh. And maybe they're probably Kemsa Skando, uh-huh, uh-huh. but we will be very quick to judge Somali. Right, so yeah, yeah. we really have to be we have to condition ourselves to stop mm. being conditioned mm. and being intentional. So I really feel like if you can't call them out, I will call ourselves out. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, I, I feel like the this is what I, I, I believe. I believe that, you know, it's up to us to try and change the, the, the conversation and yeah. the narrative. I'm yeah. very intentional with, you know, how I, I come off yeah. um, or on stage, you know, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like... Even when the when the host when when during stand up when the host is introducing me, I'm like, don't don't say you don't have to say I'm Somali. That's, that's what I was telling yeah. you. Like I'm very intentional. I'm yeah. like, listen, I'm a, I'm a funny dude. Yeah. I just call me just like you do any any other, any other comedian, person, yeah. any other comic. Yeah. Just call me on stage. Don't say. Don't mention your WhatsApp, anything about this. Next, Antonio Soul, this Kikuyu Kenyan. Nobody says that. Exactly. Nobody. Exactly. So so that is what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm, I'm very intentional with that. I'm like, don't don't um, I don't wanna. Pass, pass off. I don't want to come off as this Somali comedian. Yeah, because then also you don't want to come off like, like I got this slot or yes. this shot because Be- I'm Somali. Yeah, it's I'm not a token Somali. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. This is this is merit based. Mm. I'm here because of my gift mm. and the work of Putin. Mm. So um, there, there's a lot of intentionality from 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 Somalis right now. I'd yeah. give them props. Yeah. If, you know, um, right now I'm, I'm I'm shooting a movie. I'm part of the cast. Yeah, tell shooting, us about it. Shooting this movie. I can't really talk about it yeah. much. But but even you know just going through the scripts. Mm-hmm. We with my fellow cast members yeah. like no this is not what we want to do mm, this change is not this. real this yeah. is not real yeah, this is not this. Yeah, this true is not yeah, portraying yeah. our community yeah. in the light we want yeah. so change this so we we have a conversation with yeah. the creatives yeah. with the creative team the, yeah. the director I'm like uh, this is i'm not comfortable playing this exactly I'll, and also it's not factual it's not so factual i don't want to do it yeah. yeah this is not true yeah. change this yeah we have this we call ourselves like exactly. it's, it's up to us to push to push that conversation, mm. the Somali creative, yeah. and, 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 and and we also, you know, uh, could benefit a lot from um, creatives who are non-Somalis like you, yeah. who are, you know, the, the goodwill, yeah. you know, to, 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 to sort of push that agenda. Yeah, me, I love my Somalis. Hey, my 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 neighbor, Fatou, uh-huh. who's like my sister, because mm-hmm. I, I don't have a sister in our home, so my mom considers her like our sister. Uh-huh. So I've lived with Somalis. Somalis are the best people to to live with uh-huh. because uh, my goodness you will be well taken care of uh-huh. first the cooking number one the kindness the connections and just the idea of community like you yeah. ca- you cannot you cannot mess with me True. you you can't even insult me i'm at like your joker you know we're having yeah. our life yeah. Yeah. then one one person mm. insults me mm. everybody else like, uh, will come for and this person is Somali. Yes. Has like maybe disrespected me. If all of them will come for him. Nice. It's never a thing about it. Because I've always had this growing up, but Somalis will only fight for their people. No. It's about who stands with you. Yes. And, yes. and I know where and I now know where that comes from. Uh-huh. The idea of always being other. When you congregate, you have to fight for each other. That's it. That's Period. It. It's not about our relatives. We're relatives. You, know, you look at you look at um minority communities in you know different countries. You look yeah. at uh, Chinatown, San yes, Francisco. Yes. The idea of a community. Yes. Um, you look at the Italian minority in New York. Mm-hmm. You look at uh, the Somali. Irish community. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You look at Somalis in Italy. Yes. It's the idea. It's the idea yeah. of being a minority. Yeah. It's like you. We are. Um, we are. You. Know, we. We need to stick together. Mm-hmm. We need to create some sort of structure. Exactly. That that that, that, that we are protected. We need yes. security. Yeah. We need to look out for each other. Yeah. Because we we're in danger. Yeah. Yeah. You know so what I mean? I f- trust me. I feel very nice when I'm with Somalis mm. because hello. Speaking of which, uh, you know, we said we talk, spoke about how I was gonna ask you about gatekeeping. When that, uh, is it Abdul Salam? Yeah. Uh-huh. When he decided to gatekeep you, from from, from the the from Mautamu. From yeah, <laughs> from the two loves of your life, from Briara. Yeah. <laughs> Have you faced any gatekeeping in the uh, in in the industry, whether as an actor, as a comedian, or as a creative? You're trying to get into a movie, trying to play, and then you realize you have to be someone's friend, or you have to have gone to school with some person. Have you, f- or you just feel like, mm, I feel like I miss that opportunity because these people are in a clique. 
and yeah. I'm not in the clique. Yeah, yeah. I, I, um, yeah. There's definitely, there's definitely, you know, um, some, some level of gatekeeping in, in, in everything, in everywhere, yeah. in every industry. Yeah. In every industry. I was talking to a, um, a friend of mine, Amandip Jagde. Yeah. Super funny. Yeah, yeah. I know the guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Amandip was talking to me. Um, so if, if going by what we were talking about, yeah. so if you were, if we were um, very primitive, people would be like, yo. So I have this Indian. Friend, like, yeah, uh, imagine, imagine, yeah. So, so Amanda, Amanda is a super hilarious job. Um, so, um, we were talking earlier a couple of um weeks back, and yeah. we were talking about gatekeeping, and yeah. gatekeeping, gatekeeping is real, man. But, but Amanda gave me a perspective that I'm, I'm trying to employ in, in my you know frame of mind, no. Yeah. He told me gatekeeping will always be there, mm-hmm. right? And gatekeeping also breeds. Entitlement, Anto. Mm-hmm. Like me, 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 I really deserve this, and these people are keeping this. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. You see, you see that aspect. Okay, I never, okay, I never okay. used to view it from that perspective. Mm. So Amanda was like, the thing about gatekeeping, and this is what he says: like, yo, you need to stop, quit being a bitch. Mm-hmm. These things, these are real pertinent issues yeah. that will always be there. Yeah. Have always been there. Yeah, right. You, yeah. So you need to be. To shun the entitlement. Don't be entitled. So don't feel like you have to be in yes. that circle. Yeah, I have to you be in that circle. You build your own table. Yes. Yeah. So Monday was like, no, just um, become more intentional mm-hmm. with what you want. Yeah. Try and carve out your own way. Yeah. And the universe has yeah. a way of making things align. Mm-hmm. So we are coming from we're coming from a place of um, um I'm sorry coming from a place of um from victimhood yeah to like no i'm the hero in my yeah, own story exactly yes this, this this is a real issue gatekeeping yeah. is real yeah but 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 it has always been real and it's not just exclusive to me yeah. and is going through the same exactly, thing exactly yeah. yeah thousands of creators but don't sit and now look for other victims yes so you guys can moan uh, and just and have sit a pity and party like, yeah this yeah is, this pity is, party yeah that's so true this is the this is the you know um Victimized. Pity party association of Kenya. Pity party association P- of. P Park. <laughs> <laughs> and you actually, and you guys, instead of you guys now sitting together and doing something about it. Pity party organization association of, of Kenya. P Park. They get like an office space in <laughs> in Lavington. No, they won't buy. They won't get an office. <laughs> <laughs> they probably be stuck on WhatsApp. <laughs> They don't have the impetus to sort of like, oh, you see, they can't even allow us to open an office. <laughs> <laughs> they say we don't have enough no, money. That'd be crazy. Land, landlords want landlords want two months rent in advance. Yeah. So you're complaining about rules. <laughs> you yeah. become complainers. Yeah. Complainers. So I, I I I like that. That's powerful. Yeah. So you take you that take, power back. Yes. Take you that take your power back and mm. to take your power back. Become mm. intentional. Know what you want. Yeah. And and just try and look for um like-minded individuals. Yeah. You know whose you know vision and yours. A line, yeah, and and everything will sort of you know um, fall into place, man. I was I was um, I was telling you earlier on that um, that you you should model because now now that I know you act, you should also model because you still have that skinny look where you can just be commerc- commercially yeah, yeah. viable. Okay, be- before and then you, you t- and then you told me hold up, then you told me ah, you know me. The reason why I'm actually uh, like this until I work on my body. Uh-huh, yeah. and I remembered. You run marathons. Yep. And I was like, guy, you run 21 kilometers. Like, like, what are you, what are you, what are you thinking? What, why? Who are you trying to, who's, who's chasing you? <laughs> My problems, get keepers, bro. Yeah, I'm running from get keepers, bro. <laughs> or you're running two opportunities to get two opportunities. <laughs> Without get capers. Yes, yeah, that's about why you run. Why do you um, run? And why do you run so far? I mean, that's, that's not a joke. Nine kilometers is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've, I've been trying to um, sort of build, you know, healthy routines, man. Mm. You know, so 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 every every day, every day, um, I wake up at uh, five. Mm-hmm. I have to go to the mosque. I live just mm-hmm. you know next to the mosque. So mm-hmm. we pray five times a day. I'm a Muslim. I'm a practicing Muslim. Mm-hmm. I'm very spiritual. Mm-hmm. So I wake up um, at five, go to the mosque, come back home. And that is, I don't go back to sleep. Yeah. That, that's my, uh, yeah. So I decided to, I'm going to do something, something difficult, man. Yeah. I was uh, trying to embrace challenges. I'm like, okay, so this, this thing scares me. Yeah. Man. Yeah. 
the idea of 21k yeah. and that's just you know and the, from from the the, the the starting line to the finishing line yeah. so you have like a big nini that's distance to cover very big distance so so it's like no even the run up to that yeah when you get to um uh, carnivo then yes. you get to the starting line exactly so, like, so you you you're running about 26k wow so so I was like I used to be like um this this thing scares me man but i was prepared i was like i signed up i signed up for the stanchat marathon yeah. about 2 months prior i co- yeah. i paid the money i committed i was like okay i yeah. paid for this there's a power when you put your money into yo thank you yo it was like yeah, yeah the kenyan in us is like, like not, not, not money is not going to go like, yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so i started prepping uh, about a month and a half out so it, it was be- uh, looking back on that was the most beautiful time in my wow. life i used to wake up right five you know no phone no nothing yeah. i go to the mosque yeah. come back home um have cereal you know um hydrate change into my uh, workout gear yeah. and go yeah. and go to a modabdu ministry of works club yeah. in south sea yeah so yeah just just you the track it's so um peaceful and mm-hmm. serene mm-hmm. you get to listen to podcasts as yeah. i was running yeah to do stretches i used to catch the the sunrise every morning wow beautiful and powerful wow and are you are you continuing with this journey Is, like yeah. h- how does it make you feel like in terms of like i mean your your body definitely will change because yes. you're going to get leaner i mean you 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 feel like now i just can't go out eating anything because i know what it means when i put what i put into my body yeah, yeah. but then spiritually and 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 your soul how does that you make know. you feel it, it it calms you it calms you cuz cuz um because I mean I mean the, the truth of the matter is showbiz showbiz as an industry um um supports a lot of delinquency mm-hmm. you've been you, you, mm-hmm. you're in showbiz mm-hmm. you know you get to see people um you know it, it supports alcoholism yeah. it supports you know smoking yeah. it's being you reckless know, behavior. reckless behavior yeah, yeah. tabiambaya 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 bad manners i was talking to uh, a makeup artist at at at, at the set of the movie i'm shooting and yeah. he was telling me think about showbiz as sorry for the detour no, it's okay um, think about showbiz is you know it makes you feel like it makes you think the world is the same as you know how you view it mm. like your reckless behavior mm, mm. then you get outside there and you're like yo it's only people in showbiz that exactly, know this is yeah. the norm yeah. people out there yeah. are living healthy lives and as time goes by you realize hey these stresses are making are really messing up with me yes. cuz yes. i'm a, i'm unfit yes. i mean now i'm i don't look as good as i used to before it really yeah. catches up yeah. with and you and also the, the mental the mental aspect mm, of it mm. i'm very spiritual man mm-hmm. i'm very spiritual um i uh, i try to maintain a uh, uh you know b- b- good you know mental um health mm-hmm. um spirituality and physical health mm-hmm. so three 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 anchors yeah. for me religion is number one mm-hmm. religion is a very big anchor in my um in my life actually yeah. without yeah. religion i'd be i'd be i'd be in the trenches man mm-hmm. yeah i'd be i'd be so 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 bad my mental wellness would be down there because yeah. we pray five times a day and i'm very intentional with it yeah. so yeah. when i go in there I'm, i'm present i'm like so god this is me i'm talking to him it's like, yeah. it's like therapy yeah. five times a day yeah. then you add the you know physical activities and trying to be mindful and you know just and yeah do you feel that there's um there's um I mean, I don't want to put you in the spot like that, but do you feel there's a connection between like how, you know, we are walking away from our, spi- and not necessarily religion, but our spirituality uh, and our mental health. And I'm not saying that people who are religious don't have mental health issues, yes. but do you feel that there's a connection between w- literally just walking away and deciding, you know, me, I don't want to do anything with religion or spirituality, and it ends up messing with people's like mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do, I do. Because, 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 it centers you man i don't know i don't want to talk again i don't want to talk about i have the license talk for everybody mm-hmm. but my personal experience is 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 um once you know um your mental uh, your your spirituality your spiritual person spirituality is, yeah. is, is 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 in a good place mm-hmm. you're more centered you're more peaceful yeah. you can then you know focus on other things mm-hmm. do you know what i mean um it also people human beings are driven by purpose man mm-hmm right and 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 yeah for me for me spirituality is a, is a big aspect of that you know i'm like okay so this is before anything else adan is a muslim yeah adan is a muslim yeah before anything else yeah. i i know i've come to that's why we muslims have this prayer that 
we, we say god give us the best of we pray to god to give us the best of both worlds mm-hmm. like the primary reason why i'm here i believe this as is is to to worship god mm-hmm. to worship i'm i'm spiritual yeah. so everything you do must be in line with that that's a purpose yes yes that's number one. Yeah. so every and it's good to know what you are and what you want cuz yeah. cuz then ultimately all your goals will contribute to your bigger life goal, yeah. which is yeah um you know maintaining my obligation to my creator and then 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 pursuing other things so even yeah. with my comedy i'm very intentional man yeah. there's certain topics i try to Yeah, yeah yeah i'm like it's not worth it exactly it's, it's not worth it yeah i'm this and i'm this yeah I'm this yeah man. i like that you so i feel like this podcast the episode is all about being intentional yeah um as we conclude i'm is i want us to talk about your relationship with money and wealth uh-huh. what do you do when you're not um making a slough I genuinely feel like you're a really really funny person and I can't wait for guys to interact with you more um Thank you. you know the link is in the bio like we say link in bio. You, you must click and get to know more about uh, Adan um when you're not you know making a slough or acting huh. how you ensuring you're paying your bills you're living your lifestyle you're out here you know looking for your your best life and just yes. living the life yes um you are fourteen stand chat marathon you know how do you because <laughs> you can't run and you by the time you're at the finish line, i'm broke and i did not win <laughs> guys give me some money for just going through it <laughs> and also kikuyu is like somali so this one i'm allowed to say our parents will not allow us to sit stay in the house yeah. guys yo you have to go look for money just please leave this place go look for money and you move out you move out way earlier so you have to yeah. look for your own money yeah. so how do you how do you make your money and um in terms of i'm not going to answer how i make my money yeah. but my relationship with money yeah, okay uh, you don't understand us how you make your that's a bit scary no, not really. after everything we've said you, uh, yeah. you said i'm not going to say how <laughs> Yeah, it's it's Oh, you wouldn't say where. Yeah, where. Yeah, you say yeah, let's be yeah, because not so, everyone so, guys, not everyone works for a, a supermarket. Some of us work in yeah, man. serious places where you cannot mention. Not all Somalis sell cotton <laughs> in the city. This is stop. Stop. Can you sew a cotton by the way? Yeah? <laughs> Can you sew? Listen, I I, th- I think we are wrapped here, man. <laughs> yeah, listen. It, it's crazy. You brought it up. Yeah. I just went along. And you can't even get mine. You know my friends every time they go to Isili like yo bro ule cousin yako wa cartains. I'm like I don't who told and you. And I'm like I can't be mad cuz this is probably a cousin of mine that sells cartains. I'm like oh. so it's okay. It's fine. Keep so it's like okay but who told you? But who told you have a cousin who is cartains? This is spooky stop. Yeah so yeah, so but, my relationship. Yeah but some some of us are amazing people guys. That's that's the the bottom line. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So my relationship with money is 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 you know people um money money offers money means uh, different things to 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 different to to to, to people yeah um f- for me um money is nice man but money doesn't dictate my happiness and all mm. it doesn't it doesn't man cuz cuz I mean I know money gives you security yeah and yeah I know people think this is you know um just like talk a, yeah just just talk but yeah. this is this is my mental This is where this is the space of mind that I employ that mm. I'm in. Um Muslims we have this we have this um frame of mind called tawakkul. Tawakkul mm-hmm. is is a, it's called tawakkul. Tawakkul is a beautiful it's a beautiful concept. Mm-hmm. It's about leaving all your affairs to Allah. Aha. Uh-huh. So say when you when you, when you have money, when you live in the life business is good. And and when you don't have money, mm-hmm. you're the same person until mm-hmm. you're the same person. Mm-hmm. Money just gives you um money just gives you the, the idea. It's not yeah. even security. It yeah. gives you the idea of security. Yes. Like, yeah, I can go to this place yeah. and be comfortable yeah, without the mental, true. you know, torture yeah. without thinking about how am I going to pay this. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. When you don't have money, you'll ha- you'll be stressed. Mhm. But but I'm intentional with the way I I, I view money. Yeah. Right? I could have a lot of chums. You know, we have faces where exactly, like, ah, yeah. I'm comfortable. Yeah, now. like this I'm balling. I'm balling. But but i'm still the same person mm. i saw i saw a quote from an islamic page that says that said a person that is in his mansion with his cars and f- beautiful family in his mansion and cars and beautiful family in his own compound yeah. under a tree drinking tea with his family reading a, a newspaper yeah. and a person that's floating 
yeah. on the ocean, yeah. on, on a piece of wood. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the waves, are, it's high tide yeah. and, and it's raining. Yeah. The two of you need God just, just the same. Yeah. Just as much. Yeah. So, so, um, so it's like, yo, I have this money, but, 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 but. I'm still the same person. Mm, I'm still the same I person. Like that, yeah. I'm still the same person, and that 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 saves you from a lot of you know um, terrible decisions that yeah, you make. Yeah, it's when funny. Is that about the the analogy that you came up with? There's one that I read, uh-huh. and it was a rich rich guy on a uh-huh. on a yacht uh-huh. um, who was fishing, and he was uh-huh. next to another guy uh-huh. on a small boat, also fishing, and then this rich guy is telling the old guy like. Kwani, you, you don't want to like make money and, you know, just, you know, and then when you retire, uh, you know, you just bring a boat and all you do is just fish yes. and enjoy your life. Uh-huh. And the poor old man told him, that's exactly what I'm doing. You are powerful, man. Like you're telling me that I should go now, be rich fast, yeah. then come and enjoy. Yeah what I've been doing all my life, which exactly. is sitting here by the small boat That's and fishing. Beautiful. Man. So it really makes you realize that, and, and also the concept of how you think we can dictate people's uh, relationship with yes, money. Yes. No, no, but Adan, no, you no. need you need know where you are right now. You know, and just the, 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 the taking away the joy of life and comparing. You should be having your, you should be now driving your Mercedes Benz. Yeah. So people never now telling you yes, well, how you should relate yes. with your money. So I feel, I feel like that's deep. I, it's funny because hosting you, and that's the thing I always say, never judge people. In my mind, I thought we we're gonna be like really be stupid and silly. So in my head, I was like, "Oh God, I really hope this conversation doesn't go on a tangent. It's just laughing oh, the whole feelings, time." My feelings, man. Ah, <laughs> ah, man. No, but you see, I knew yeah. you were deep. Yeah. Uh-huh. I've never, I've never ho- even when yeah. I was on radio and TV, I may really to host comedians, uh-huh. and not to mean that I, they have nothing to say, but because I just feel like I don't want the audience to be like. Okay, so why is the guy going to make us laugh? Yeah. Like I thought he was coming I mean, on as a co-host. So I love that there was a lot of depth in our conversation. Yes. yes. That was that was quite interesting. And and and, and to, just to um, throw this in there. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sure you 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 felt this at you know at, at one point, man. You know, uh, the, the 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 concept of uh, mind that I'm in right now, the space I'm in right now, when it comes to money and yeah. and good things yeah. that happened to me is yeah. I'm not I'm not uh, nowadays I'm, I'm I'm not shocked. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. I talk to people, they give me X amount of money yeah. to, to do something. Yeah. Um, I have nice things happen to me. Yeah. Right? Great yeah. things. Yeah. My younger Adam would be like, yo, this is so mind blowing. Yeah. yeah, let's put yo. this on let's put this on TikTok. Yo, yo. this is happening. Yeah, I'm, let me go look for those Riara girls. Yeah. Where you where are? Where are they, man? Say. And where are you Salam, man, I yo. can spoil you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like now I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's it's dope. It's dope, but 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 yeah, I feel like I deserve all the nice things. And, yeah. and, and this is not coming from a place of arrogance. It's coming yeah. from a place of of gratitude it's mm-hmm. like and and, and self belief mm-hmm. it's like yeah this i'm, I'm getting chums now it's it's okay it's yeah. I'm, I'm i'm more measured with the yeah. way I, I view you know you know big money coming exactly, in yeah. and, and good things in, yeah. in opportunities yeah. I, I got this opportunity get yeah. x opportunity to yeah. do this yeah. a version a younger version of of me like yo this is so sick exactly yeah, yeah. Like I'm, now i'm like okay this is this is this is um this is this is this dope. Is nice, this but, is yeah. nice, but yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. That is where I'm at. But yeah. it's like I'm, I'm deserving of good things, yeah. and not in a in an arrogant way, but yeah. in, a, in like a uh, place of self belief, yeah. you know, and and and, and self confidence, and, and like you know, just yeah, I'm like this. Like it's, it's called a pod it's you. called silent money. No, not really. It's always silent. No, it's silent money. Even opportunities. It, it is Forget silent. About money and opportunities. Like, By the way, like it's, being on the pod with you. On yeah. Is that, like, is that is that is that you, a big big thing? It's a big thing, right? Ah, you had that. Yo, I used to, I, yo, man, and I used to yo, I used to look up to you. Now I don't because I'm tall. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Still do, man. I, I used to watch you on TV, man. Right? <laughs> and, and 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 now, man, it's such an honor to be on the podcast with you and yeah. to talk with you and yeah. to chop it up with you. Yeah. But like, I'm like, it's my, it's 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 nice, Anto. Yeah. It's nice, but I'm like, yes, I um, I'm destined for greatness. Yeah. You know, it's like 
the, the 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 frame of mind I'm in right now yeah. is like my greatness yeah. right now yeah. can coexist with Anto's greatness yes. and I'll not feel weird I'll exactly. not feel awkward now yeah. please yeah. this is where I'm at right now there's also an Africa it's a peaceful you are you are very hey, you are very deep I'm I'm really genuinely impressed by you there's um there's an African thing of like don't go out here telling everybody what you're working on because I mean I also believe that the God we pray in who wow. blesses us people will pray to God and say why all is Adan Yes. And he's always gloating. Every time you bless him, he has to just remind us the way I got this deal. Now I'm shooting in Italy. Yeah. Now I'm gonna be in Portugal. I mean, you we really have to also be careful again the power of the and the way we do things. Uh-huh. So it also comes the age, and and money will uh, also age you. Yes, true. Because when true. you make money, you lose money. You make you really lose money for a long time. Yeah. You you realize oh money changes me no yes. no it didn't change me i just changed the way i, I relate with money yes, true. now money is teaching me oh you think i'll be here forever yeah. nope it's not going to always going to be always so you really have to be careful you know when you start calling people and tell them the way you're making it and and as africans we fear that stuff cuz all they have to just clench their ass and be like this adnan will never make money again yes. and it's over <laughs> and it's over and you're like my my village as our akin my mom you know what my mom did yes. my mom is a big proponent of not not telling people Thank you're blessed thank you that's how, how my, my mom commercial. and your mom bff how is on a tv commercial mm-hmm. then her friends were like yo we saw your son I'm like you what my, yeah. my son that's not yeah. my son yeah you yeah like like that's not my son that's my ca- my son's cousin that's my nephew yeah, that's my nephew I yeah i don't know that boy went home yeah she called the shakes like, yeah uh, uh, we need to ward off the evil eye yeah that's true yeah until i'm i'm very um curious to hear your take on this mm-hmm. well, what's your what's your what's your um thinking on how do you perceive nice things that happen to you now and nice opportunities and yeah. money that come your way how do you how, what's your relationship with the blessings now i mean for me because i i've come from a place of luck and and luck l a c k where i didn't have these things so one there's a huge i mean f- and i'll be very honest it's funny you ask that, that question because i always sometimes i do i do ponder uh-huh. uh, on it and i'm like at the beginning my relationship with money was very bad uh-huh. because i just didn't know how to take care of money for me i understood that the concept of money was that when you make money you should get everything you've never gotten mm. that's what that's what money is money is supposed to sustain you like you said it's supposed to the idea of i can buy a chair today mine is broken yes it's fine uh-huh. doesn't mean that you go buying every expensive chair that I you've you. never had in your life you. so when you come from a place of luck like myself and then you start getting lucky with money uh-huh. the non preparedness and the lack of financial education i feel for me is a very huge issue uh-huh. as far as being a creative is concerned because uh-huh. i made crazy money when i was like in siri i was a script supervisor uh-huh. i was an actor i was working for the production mm. then i was in sugar i was working in production and i was still an actor mm-hmm. i did shows like mali in terms of like script um uh development so I, i did a lot of that stuff and even advert i worked advertising so i did and then i ended up on tv you know on teen republic mm. before i ended up on radio so i did touch and interact with money a lot mm. until i started to make my own choices that didn't involve money but involved principle uh. But yes, because, yes, including walking that. away, walking yes. away from jobs that I mm. felt like I didn't want to do anymore, mm-hmm. walking away from toxic environments, but because of not having a relationship with money, mm-hmm. my now principal decisions were suffering because now I didn't have the money. Uh-huh. So now I started to sort of berate and was like, oh my God, if only I'd taken care of money before. I'd be in a better position to make these life-changing scenarios and and decisions I'm making. I hear you. But I feel it was meant for a reason. Yes. So I was meant to uh-huh. lack. I came from a place of lack. Got lucky started making money when I now began to sort of really create a foundation for myself. Uh-huh. I began losing money because now when you really become principal and you have a value system, you will begin losing money. Uh-huh. And when I started making money in my own terms, now I know better. Now I don't have to worry if I go and we have tea and we pay and I'm busy. I can't wait for the message from Stanbic. <laughs> so, so I know if the money is enough and I'm not saying that I have all the money, but now my relationship with money is very intentional. Okay. It is before I buy myself a new car. Do I have shares? Do I have insurance? Do I have a plot? All those things and it took me the long route but the better route to learn. So for me I always say and that's why I feel for me this is a very interesting conversation because I 
keep wanting to ask everybody what is your relationship with money because it is very important. I hear you, man. Yeah. That's powerful. And yeah. for, as a young creative... And you're the only one who's asked me a question on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah man. What I'm is very... wrong? What is your problem? <laughs> listen. <laughs> Why I, are you I, so... Listen, I, I look up to you, man. You've been in the like game. This. been in the game. And ah, don't. Uh, what, I'm not no, old. No. This guy, I'm, stop making me look old. No, but uh, I, I mean old in terms of longevity. Oh my God. <laughs> in terms of longevity in the game. The international audience will be like, let me Google this guy. Why are old is this dude? Because... If no. you say he's watching me since you are a kid, oh my god, this is so wrong. I met someone, a lady, who's got children, who was telling the kids, I used to watch this guy when he was on TV. I'm like, you have children. I mean, why are you telling your kids that? And then someone else I met, he's one of the directors of Bar Next Door. Uh-huh. It's like uh, one of the coolest places in Nairobi. Uh-huh. So he meets me up and tells me, I said, oh, my name is Mwenda. I'm a director at BND. So me, I'm thinking, I don't know why this guy is selling this information, but it's all good. Uh-huh. Then he says, oh, could you come, come and say hi to my girlfriend? I'm like, oh, me, I'm that celeb who will follow you and go yeah. and mm-hmm. have fun. Yeah. So I follow him and tell the girlfriend, um, you know, th- when I was growing up, I wanted to be like Antonio Sol. Yeah, yeah. Guy, I, he was my role model. I'm like, guy, no, stop using words like mm-hmm. those. So I beseech you. Uh-huh. To stop. So two, two things, Anto. <laughs> two things. Yeah. Two things. Yeah. Um, so number one, I'll ask you this later when okay. we are wrapping. Okay. It's one of the uh, craziest groupy stories. Okay. You you have. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, that's okay. number one. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> so, 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 when it comes to um, what you're talking about, how you view money and yeah. the space of mind you're in yeah. right now, yeah. when it comes to opportunities yeah. and money, yeah. I feel like that is what creatives, young creatives, need to need to learn money. Yeah. So, um, you know, because you, you, when, when you talk about longevity in the yeah, game, yeah. you know, it's easy to, 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 to be, to, to burst onto the scene, yeah. the limelight, then yeah. you stay a couple of uh, months, then, yeah. you, then you dip. Yeah. But you, you've been there, you've yeah. been there, man. Yeah. What is, how do you navigate the bureaucracy, the gatekeeping, and, yeah. and TV, and yeah. radio, and yeah. showbiz in yeah. general? How, how do you do that, man? First and foremost, I feel for me, the, the not having like commercial hits, in terms of like songs and like let's say like commercially viable, you no, know, like not not having a song like Kaskev Beuko, you uh-huh. know, that's just on the waves and everyone is listening to it. Uh-huh. I feel for me that was a very good thing uh-huh. because it allowed me to one work on my niche and the people who actually do appreciate me. It allowed me to push my craft and also allowed me to use music as a means to an end and not the end. Mm. So thinking of music as how do I use this music to network with people like you and then ask you okay now assuming this platform wasn't there so we've just become friends and you're acting and I'm like how can I get on the platform you see you became my friend because you've seen me on TV and now we're at an event and we've become friends now I'm using that opportunity to be like oh you told me you're acting so uh, you guys have like a role for like a guy with rasta ass uh, yeah. you see now I, I'm using I, I, that to, I, I to, to, to put myself I instead of relying on this guy has a big song called Chipsunga or paid my dues he's a big deal Nobody can touch him, nobody can talk to him, nobody can do all of that. So it's very important, one, to really know that this is where I want to go. Uh. And decide, regardless of any success or failure that I'm going to get here, it will be successfully forward. And I always believe in failing forward. Mm. So even when I've made moves or I've made decisions that uh-huh. I felt like were not up to par, were subpar, I said that I, was, I didn't fail. I failed forward. So I had to do something about it. And I think that's why I've been in the game for a while. And also, to be honest, and like you said, it generally is because of God. There is just, for me, I'm a very spiritual person. I I always say people have the most unique different voice. I have the most unique style. I am so different from everybody else. But God just somehow somehow says, you will be in every crevice that I want you to get in. Mm. Even when it seems like it's the, it's the eye of the needle. I, hear you. I will get you through mm-hmm. those situations. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of belief in that. And I really do believe that our moms pray for us a lot. Yes. I am not oh. saying that those who are not blessed are not prayed for. But for me, I'm a believer in that our moms when they go on their knees it's a very powerful uh-huh. and that's why for me even when it comes to muslim religion there is a huge power yeah. when it comes to kneeling down and praying to allah when you're actually on your knees mm. so and and that's why even as a christian we say when you go on your knees you really humble yourself there's blessings that come up way above you yeah. so uh, there's a lot of those things that i don't 
get to talk about a lot but i do believe in the power of spirituality and also again being very intentional sure. and like you said not calling yourself to a pity party yes. all the time knowing knowing what you want yeah. that is what creatives need to hear yeah. that is what creatives need to hear man yeah. stories like that yeah. you know what i mean you 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 need to know where you have you want to go yeah. right and you also have to network you know try and build rapport with the um, important people in the industry yeah. and that is pretty much what i'm trying to do i have yeah. like a uh, my my vision my body of work i want to create this body of work yeah i want to i want to tell us tell us up. how the next yes. six months it's one not, year yes. five years look like stand up is not everything to me yeah. i'd say that i love stand up stand up is the, my primary passion it's yeah. there but i want to do acting yeah. i want to jump onto adjacent markets yeah or maybe do workshops for like stand up comedians yes yeah i hear you mm. so now um i'm looking at what i'm doing from a holistic perspective from a yeah. business perspective yeah. okay i'm funny man but how do i put myself out there how do i yeah. package myself yeah how do i make myself appealing mm-hmm. to corporate mm-hmm. like how, how do i so i've been very intentional um, mm-hmm. about that and and thank you for for yeah. this i open yeah. insight yeah i was like i'm going to sneak in a few questions of my own yeah man. i'm just sure i'm like what has this guy just done by introducing <laughs> just in me and saying hey and told his relationship with money but i mean but thank you so much i feel like like i genuinely want to be your friend and i i really want to see how where how far you would go for me i don't want i'm not interested in you working with kevin hart or like doing something with a rock in a movie those 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 are good things yeah. but i want to hear them looking for you because mm-hmm. of this great job you're doing in sub saharan africa in terms of like one there's changing misconceptions or you've got these amazing films that are coming out on netflix uh-huh, uh-huh. that's what i want to hear from mm-hmm. you i want to hear that you have a special on netflix yeah, you know yeah, you. and it's shot in new york where you yes. didn't have to be like at the stereotypically at i mean nairobi or whatever it's like you i want to hear you make those kind of moves yes. i would want to see you host the daily show without regard to at there was this huge audition in Nairobi or Somalia no mm-hmm. it's because of just how amazing yes. you are that you ended up on that platform mm-hmm. so you owe me and you owe us who love you this and very difficult yes. task because I, I want rich friends i don't owe you so guys. you'll be my rich friend yes. Yo Anto, um yo it's, <laughs> yo, it's, it's you know, um, let's I've, I've been following you your trajectory and you you your career in music yeah. and, and 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 w- w- one thing that I've observed is and I'm I'm tr- I'm, tr- I'm trying to get into that uh, frame, frame of mind yeah. is is success should should only means different things to mm-hmm, very different creatives. Mm-hmm. Right? Success is very ambiguous. Yes. Yeah. Like what you've said like yeah. what is Anto what is Anto comfortable with? Yeah. Does he how many records does he want to sell? Exactly. Is he comfortable doing this? Yeah. And also being on radio exactly. and TV. Exactly. Yeah. Cuz cuz I feel like most creatives just you know succumb to the pressure to the outside pressure but yeah. what do you really want? Yeah. Maybe Anto doesn't want to be this level nah. of, of, of in that maybe wants to be this level in this this level in that yeah. this, do you know what i mean i want to be for, like for me personally i want to be at this level for this long ah uh, yes not stagnating like i know what this graph means to me i just want to do this for this long because then i decide when to i don't deep i decide when to go up and 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 when to come back to that level where it said i'm going to work on an album this year it's out I've released the album moving on I'm performing in Mauritius I see you mean France I'm doing my, and you wondering how how is he doing all these things yeah. but because while I'm here while I'm here while I'm plateauing I am busy I am a people person I will pretend to love someone that I I cannot stand just because I know what I will get from that person because we are human beings I may not mm. like you as a person there's uh. nothing wrong with you but my vibe is like I just don't feel this person but I'm like this person is going to help me to next to the next level so I'll plateau and I will network and I will open knock on doors and push where I need to push and break down those doors when I need to break them and get into uncomfortable situations like doing a podcast and doing it on my own and and putting myself out there because I know how I want my graph to look like mm. and that is solely based on me yes i do not i yes, do not man. compare myself i do not yani it's one thing i've had to work very hard because that thing will give you anxiety and depression thank you man. i do not i am not the next person and i don't want to be them and i am not interested because it will only hurt me as the more they move so it's like physics i'm assuming i know physics mm-hmm. so you're here stagnating Eish, okay. and there's a tire that is moving uh-huh. and there's no force on you there's no movement so you have no weight you're weightless you're air yeah. while well, somebody else is busy building momentum mm-hmm. all you're doing is sitting there washing their momentum i don't like the way they move to the left like that 
who do they think they are? Because I don't even like the size of that tire. If it was only bigger, you know, you go build your own tire and move. So tell people how to move. I hear yo, you are powerful and too. I feel like yeah. for young creatives and too. It's you you important. need to have a workshop, man. Yeah. See, see, we 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 let other people define what success should mean to yeah. us. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. yo, she she go to she go to um America. Yeah. The the the, 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 the comedy scene in yeah. New York. Yeah. You DM Kevin Hart like you know try and I'm send like, him your clips. I'm, I'm like, like you don't know where I want to be. Exactly. My, my my dreams should only make sense to me, man. Yeah. So, so thank you for that. Thank and you. And going back to what you were talking about, mm-hmm. just one more question. Oh God. You're talking about um um you know um you having to have you know done some so some things you know yeah. to, you know pretending to not like people yeah so h- how do you where do you i mean how you know it's it's called a, it's one of those balancing acts do you know yeah. what i mean you really want to maintain the integrity of the craft yeah. of the art form yeah. and then also you you have to network and yeah. pretend you don't like this person yeah. Yeah. so so how do you maintain that level of authenticity and and you know um genuineness inside yeah. you how do you stay true to yourself Be like i, I really want to this person, make this move but this person yes. who's gatekeeping it's called having a value system i mean and that's my value system my value system is that there's things i'll stand for there's things i don't stand for there's a way i must be treated and there's a way i treat people so i genuinely believe i'm very nice or kind to people and i expect the same reciprocation and when i feel like i'm in spaces where i don't feel the same i will walk out i will walk out where they feel it's good money but the treatment will make uh-huh. me feel like a slave i will walk out i will walk out where there is good money i'm being treated nicely and other people are not being treated nicely i will be the first to call out the injustice uh-huh. But also, I also know that I am not, I'm not singular in this world. There's a lot of people who control and, you know, just are, are living around us. So I'm not going to behave like everyone else is an enemy and because I don't like this person. And so I have to it's also powerful. put myself and say, there's something that I know, it's called being stoic. Ah. There's things or people or situations that I know I do not like. They bring a lot of trouble, a lot of stress to me. Mm. But because there's an end game i will hang on there i will shut my mouth i will sit there and i will get what i want and my mom has played a huge role in teaching me how to be like this where you don't have to comment in every situation you don't have to walk away from every situation you don't have to keep you don't have to keep quiet in every situation but you can hang in there get what you want and vamos because that noise you make that loudness you make that drama you make that kafafol that you you do in sight you'll regret when you say it when you realize later i could have just kept quiet i could have just not sent that email so things like for example sending emails when, when i'm angry or messages i send them to myself first and i'm like is this an email i want to receive from someone who i want to work with maybe i should never have sent that i even have a 30 seconds like email like timer uh. so when i really question myself should this go out i'm like undo i was doing this when i was angry i should have chilled out and also now it's made me work harder because when it comes to things like money before if you stay with my money people knew in agencies if you stay with anto's money you are fucked because i will come for my oh, money me i'm like a kikuyu match boy. loan shark you don't play my money then i started realizing the only reason why money is becoming less for you is because you don't have a lot of work and you don't put yourself out there so you only have one stream of income yes and you're but if you're waiting here, on this thank you if you're pay. here like me working with, with unicaf with google Aish. with smanoff with nba and you're doing all these things you have money coming so you're not even waiting on this guy no but i'm say, like oh they're like I mean, client, you're still gonna call them yeah there's a client like, told like, me juicy uh, uh, until please invoice us you know and i was like guy uh, you have not invoiced this guy, uh, <laughs> uh, this guy is flexing now this guy is flexing now <laughs> and there's times when you're broke but you're like i have everything i need so it's important for you to have a value system but also it's important for you to not make a ruckus out of everything that happens in your life <sighs> it's not everything is a fight mm. and like you say not everything needs to be a victim sometimes you just need to chill you need to breathe and then realize that this journey you're on, if you want to reach, like you're saying, you're running a 21 kilometers race. For me to get to the end of this Sunshine Marathon, even if a squirrel decides to jump on me, that's just, I, I have to, you know, brush it off and move because you're going to lose sight of the of the finishing line. That's dope. So it's that's very dope. And important. And thank you. Thank you on, on, on behalf of, you know, young creators All the young out people. There. No, because, <laughs> yeah, because you're old. <laughs> what is the thing, <laughs> 
No, honestly, man, listen. Listen. This guy is young fired. Creatives, You're fired. Mm-hmm. Young creatives, man. I feel like young creatives and Gen Z yeah. are, are so easy to, you know, um, are so quick to throw in the towel. Yeah. It's like, ah, this job is not giving. It's because yeah. it's because the the HR, you know, sent you a passive aggressive email. Yeah. They're like, yeah. ah, this this job is not this is toxic. Yeah. I, I feel like you need to know um when to stay, how long to stay and when to dip. Yeah. So thank you for that, man. Thank S- you. Sometimes you just want to used to have to figure out what this dream really means to you yeah. and how much you really want it yeah you know and thank and thank you for allowing me to be also open and 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 you know and confident that way and yeah i'm just glad that we have we have we have gone through everything but before we end there's an issue since you ran in 1 kilometers there's an issue of the somali athletes yo <laughs> And you go to Somali, there's no way I'm gonna let you get away with stop, this. Stop sending your Somali. <laughs> Yo, where's this is my camera? Stop <laughs> sending your Somali friends that video. <laughs> S- stop. And especially you. <laughs> Yo, my Somali, Me, my I Somali sent it friends. To yeah. Every Somali friend I know. I was like, guys. <laughs> This is, this is this is why you guys get If you it. don't know what we're talking about, please watch this clip and tell us what you think about this Somali athlete who decided to represent Somalia in uh, this race where she basically this by the way, you know we like using the word vibes and inshallah wrongly because it's I mean it's it's like blasphemy. But this is the real vibes and inshallah. Like whatever happens happens. Me I'm going to have fun. And then she even said that she was running because she didn't make it she wasn't that good because she had a fracture and she she's yeah. she actually unwell and she's did this for Somalia Somalians you can never be happy I did this for you guys and you guys did. I mean she was onto something so you can never make Somalis happy let me tell you she at the end the way she just hopped yeah. like enjoy like ha huh, Teletubbies like whatever happens happens I mean I'm good <laughs> It was the most beautiful thing, yes. and it was like, guy, she does not give a shit about what you guys. It's think. like, ah, this is a good day's walk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is is the thing, is the thing, man, guys. It, Kenyans, we are quick to 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 shit on Somalia for that. It's like, yo, Kenyans are like, yo, the ministry for sports in the, Somalia the, the, is messed know, up. The anti is the vice president. I'm like, you guys, and I'm like. Okay, so as if Kenya, the Ministry it's of Sports... It's called the speck in your eyes, in Kenya, yeah. log in mind. Yes. And, and now in Kenya... We're not doing any better. The sports minister is for busy... Bo- for, both, for both cases? Yeah. A pretty chick was hired <laughs> for a job that had qualified for. <laughs> wow! I, mean? I don't want to get sued, so I'll not mention names. Yeah. Oh my God, oh my... <laughs> it's the only race where... Is this is This is... Somalia, that was really that was really mean because the only race where the winner we don't even know who the winner was. We just know about the Somali t- t- girl yes. hops coaching on. This is what I think. Yeah, this, this is my take. I think the chick, the Somalis are good runners. We, we yeah, but I feel like the incentives were just not there. Yeah, I not feel the like right. If she running for a million dollars, that would be another story. Nah, man. But like, ah, she's Somali. Just, ah, yeah. just offer her citizenship. Soma. Just offer uh-huh. her citizenship no. in any country she wants. It's like, it's like you, a nigga, would you, would you not run? I know. By the way, in Somali, when you say aniga, it doesn't mean because I used to hear that a lot. Yeah. Some people say aniga. I'm like, why do Somalis like on each other aniga? We're so proud of our black. It means it means you. It means so, like Somalis you. Are no, so proud of aniga our means heritage. you. So thank you, aniga, for watching. Uh, unlock your soul with Anthony your soul and thank you Aaron Abdi yeah, thank for you. coming thank through you for and being so me. gracious appreciate you brother thank you so appreciate much you. thank you for the gems that's what's up cheers hiya go check out the link in the bio and get to know more about Aaron Abdi that's what's up <laughs> <laughs>